Let me start over. All right, in three, two, one, go. All right, so the first thing to know about this game is you got to master all of this or you lose time. Then our normal weapon is a kind of just like a, a baton, I guess. But we can also pick up special weapons uh, like knives and other things that I don't use. Uh, the only problem with them is you lose them if you get hit. So once you grab them, try not to get hit. Um, we're going to just try to jump over as much as possible and take a little damage boost off some of these enemies. This first stage isn't too much. Uh, it's just about getting to the end with as little damage as possible. And you can pick up the cakes to refill one heart. Alright, so this is... We just make this one last jump and we're at the end of the first part of the first stage. Now we get to go onto a train. So... The big thing about the train board is you want to keep these knives through the whole thing so that you can attack these doors before you get to them. If not, you lose a lot of time by having to stand by the doors and attack them. So we're just attacking them as quickly as possible so we don't have to stop. Uh, there is one glitch in the game, and if we do these doors correctly, we'll get to see it here shortly. We just have to get through this next section. That's it. And here we go. And that cart turns into what? I don't know. But it is very scary. And we'll get to see that through the rest of the stage if I play this correctly. <laughs> so we're just going to stop and jump over those guys. Alright, so the first boss. Basically, you can one-cycle this boss if you can get him into an eternal loop of just getting hit. But if you miss, it takes... It, you lose a lot of time. So we're going to hope to one-cycle him here. Right. Hopefully a good pattern. That's an okay one. So we're just going to just spam. I don't have to make any jumps, so this works out great. You can get the one-cycle without having to jump. If he spawns at the top, you have to do double hits by jumping to keep him uh, stun locked. So that was actually really nice. Uh, the other thing I need to talk about is the scrolls. There are two types of scrolls. One basically freezes the enemy for about five seconds. And the other like takes all the small items in the board and just sends them into a black hole. We don't want to get that because that doesn't help with the speed. So, on stage two, first thing we need to know is don't walk. When you walk, you walk at a really slow pace. We want to jump through the whole thing. And I'm just going to take it easy and not try to get hit too much. <laughs> like that. Alright, so I ended up having to get a different weapon because I got hit. But this one just sends a little wave in front of you. Oh, man. So I lost that, of course, now because I got hit. This is kind of like the most annoying level in the... Well, there's a lot of annoying levels in this game. Um, but just this whole jumping mechanic while trying not to die. Get a little safety help there. And we won't try to jump over those guys. So, basically there's not, uh, I'm taking it really easy. <laughs> it's a marathon. We're not trying to set any records here. <laughs> Alright, so we know we now go to the second part of this, which is to climb this mountain. Uh, there's not much to it. The one thing you do need to know is those bats, you can, if you go fast enough, you can get them off screen. If not, they chase you through the whole thing. So, you just got to make sure you're fast enough to get up off screen. Alright, so we're getting close to the top. This next boss is a, 
uh, little doll that has two giant hands and basically you just hit the two hands one at a time um, and then the doll has a bunch of ads that come out so you just want to kind of like dodge the ads while hitting the hands um, if you can get into a rhythm just going back and forth left and right it's not that bad there is a faster strat, which involves moving one of the hands to the other side of the room and grouping up the hands, but it's a very dangerous strat because, once again, if you get hit, you lose your weapon. And it's really important that you have this weapon when killing these guys. Ah, I see why, because when you don't have it, you have to actually go to the hands. So, okay, that was the second boss. Alright, so stage three is like any good Japanese game. Or like any good platformer, an auto scroller. But it has the Japanese anime flair to it because you get to ride something. And what else would be better than riding? I'll let y'all see it first. You get to ride a giant cat. Because, yeah, of course. <laughs> so we don't want to get that. If we get that, we we ruin it. Well, we lose a lot of time on some of these bosses. Because it takes away our scroll that can uh, stun them for a few seconds, allowing us to get major hits. So, on this level don't really need to worry about taking hits. There's plenty of health through the whole thing. The one thing you do need to worry about is if you're standing all the way back here, when you go to make those jumps, you'll actually fall in the pits. That's the only thing that truly can kill you on this stage. That not knowing what's coming, like the very first few times you do it, you might not know what's coming and it might kill you just because uh, you don't know what's coming. Pretty simple auto scroller. You just uh, kill everything that comes on screen. The boss, which we will be fighting here shortly, uh, he drops a bunch of things from the or from the air. He uh, brings little frogs out, um, and he also stabs at you. So he's actually one of the hard harder bosses, but get a ton of hits on him right away that make him pretty much I mean you pretty much can knock him to halfway health down before it even really starts with the uh, scroll. Alright so we're going to pick up some health here and then we're going to get ready for the boss. Oh good, he used all of his uh, abilities, so y'all can see what he does. Oh yeah, he also shoots stuff too. He's not, he's definitely, if you were trying to do this game deathless, this is the boss that you would worry about. Or I mean, hitless. This is the boss you'd worry about. Because he does so much. Alright, now we're going to go into the forest. There are two sections to the forest. Uh, both of them involve a lot of climbing and a lot of uh, killing weird forest creature things. <laughs> and those things, the skull butterflies. Another thing to uh, mention about this game is if you go to attack, you automatically stop, so you want to be constantly jumping before you attack, just so that uh, she doesn't stop when she attacks. Alright, 
so that's the end of the first section. We'll get to kick this pumpkin into tomato. Yeah, tomato. I don't know why I thought it was a pumpkin. <laughs> now we're going to jump over these uh, enchanted trees that are like super tiny, but still thick. I mean, it's it's a pretty easy stage as long as you know the correct path. Uh, the first few times you do it, you probably won't know which way to go, and you'll run into a bunch of enemies that uh, can hit you pretty easily. But once you learn the path, it's not that hard of a stage. The boss of this is actually in a speed run, the hard part because it's a ghost dog. But he flies all around the stage, and you can... Oh, no. I'm going to get hit here. No, I'm not. Uh, he flies all around the stage, and you trying to get constant hits on him is actually pretty tough. All right. So he'll also project a second ver version of him, which you want to try to kill so that... Right, let's get a bunch of hits on him. Oh. And you want to try to kill him at the bottom, because once you kill him, and you'll see it right here, he slowly floats to the bottom. If you kill him at the bottom, you don't get that float animation. Unfortunately, I did not kill him in the right spot, but that's okay. We're still doing okay. Alright, so stage five is another auto-scroller, but this time, because, you know, obviously, we're going to ride a bird. It also has one... Uh, the boss on this, you, if you don't one-cycle him, he takes forever to kill. So we're going to... We're gonna hopefully get the one cycle on it. And we won't be sitting here watching me dodge him for the whole time. But he is a vampire. A flying vampire, so you know. There's that. <laughs> So, if you're wondering, I know I said it earlier, but what the actual story for this game is, I have a feeling, I mean, like, you're basically trying to find a bunch of relics to attach to a statue that I think comes to life and you're supposed to exercise. So, that's kind of the best explanation I can give you about this, uh, this game. But uh, honestly, I just like it because it's a really fun little platform and it doesn't take much to learn. It's a game you can pick up on the weekend. I think I did this game for a 12-hour challenge and I just stuck with it for a few more hours after that. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to try to one-cycle this guy. He's got a certain pattern to start out, but the controls don't make it easy. Got it. All right. So we at least got the one cycle. It was a little. It was a little rough, but we we don't have to watch him go flying around. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to the construction zone. So during the daylight, you know, you got a haunted construction zone. I mean, makes sense. But the boss of the construction zone is truly what nightmares are made of. So we'll see him later. Alright. So this first section is actually one of the tougher ones. If you're not perfect, you get hit a lot right through there. And, I mean, you can take hits through this level, but it's better to just get through that section clean. So you don't have to worry about anything. That was actually a pretty good section. Uh, 
so there's one more mechanic, well, there's two more mechanics I need to talk about in this game. One is coming up, it's basically you can pick up a box that gives you a question mark, and if you get the question mark, you have a 50-50 chance to get a lot of items that'll help you, or a lot of enemies. Today we got a lot of enemies. When you get the, the box with a lot of items, you get like three new scrolls, all your health replenished, a free life. And when you get the enemies, you get a ton of sandbags <laughs> that are enchanted. <laughs> so, there's a big difference there, for sure. Oh, almost missed him there. Alright, so we're, we're getting close to the boss. So, basically, I'm going to let this guy drop. The boss is a two-phase fight. The first phase is kind of like a clown that will go across the screen, and he has two attack. He has two abilities. One is to stand there, and that's when you can hit him. And the other is to zoom across the screen and uh, shoot lasers at you. So we're hoping we don't get that part too much. And then the second fight, part of the fight is well, you'll see. Alright, so we want to try to get this, get as many double hits on this guy as possible. Alright, that wasn't too bad. I missed a few though. So he's being really nice today and not giving us the bad pattern. That would be the bad pattern. You, could, you can't hit him when he does that, so if he does that a lot, you can really lose a lot of time, time in a run. Especially since you're pretty far in the run. But after you beat that for him, he hits on a giant rat. And he can turn you into a doll if you get four of those guys to play the crumbs. So you have to make sure to uh, kill those guys before they turn you into a doll. And that's it. So yeah, that, that rat, the rat king there. Uh, it's not fun to watch. Clowns and rats are not a good combination. Alright, so we're on the final stage now. And basically, in the final stage, we get a new mechanic. Where we get a weapon that we actually can't lose, even if we get hit. And it creates platforms we can use uh, through this entire stage. But the mechanic of this stage is a night and day stage. So right now, during the day part... We do our normal jumps, nothing changes. But every, I don't know what the timer is, because I never died it. But here we go. Now you can jump really, like, it's like you can jump like in on the moon or something. So we use this to get to the top up here, to the next platform. Oh, 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 oh my god. <laughs> So, if you wanted to sit here and uh, wait this out, <laughs> because when it's day, oh my god, now I'm a little tilted. <laughs> I missed the easy jump. Alright, so when it's day and you're doing normal jumps, uh, you really can't go too high up, so I lost a lot of time right there, but that's okay. It's a marathon, so. so you just get to see more of this stage. There's another question mark right there, but at this point in the game, we don't need the question mark. It won't help us with the final fight. Alright, so we're just going to wait here until it goes back. There we go. This should take us all the way up to the top with plenty of time. Alright, now we're at the second to final boss. It's basically you got the clone fight. So in pretty much every game ever made, you at least have one point in the game where you have to fight your clone. And that would be this. And that's also uh, a random horse that... Well, he's the second part of this fight, but it's a joke part. So 
Oh, after you kill your clone, he'll start coming down, and you can actually knock him to the ground. And then when he tries to get up, you just knock him back down. So, <laughs> it's just kind of a joke. Alright, so we're on to the final boss now. And she... I, I think when you get all the relics that you're collecting here, all these crystals, you actually summon her, and then you summon her to exercise her. I might be wrong there, but I'm going to go with it. Um, but she has three attacks. One is just like a sword stab. One is she throws a ball at you, and the other is she throws lightning at you. Uh, you, she just goes back and forth, left or right. You just need to hit her uh, a bunch of times. Uh, it's really not that hard of a fight, but when you first when you first start learning it, I might get one second. Oh! There we go. And that's the game right there. So we'll just wait until we lose control. Sorry, I, I <laughs> had to a little concentrate there. But yeah, that's it. Uh, actually, I'm super happy with that time. That's the best time I've had in practice all week. So uh, my my PB is a 20, 20, 15. And the world record for this game is a 19, 15. So... 2113 for me is really good. Um, I'm just happy with that, and I'm also happy I got to to show this off. And I hope if uh, hope if anybody else is interested, you come out and play this. It is on the Super Famicom. It, um, I don't. It was never ported to the U.S. because honestly, I'm sure most people have never heard of this anime either. So, uh, thank you all for. Uh, watching and uh thank you rgl for putting this on and we've got im coming up to close this out tonight so make sure to stay and watch his runs and uh i will catch y'all later all right bye